Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers along with Rumble subscribers, make sure you check me out over there. It is Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. Um, so real quick, unfortunately the prayers of yesterday's video was not answered. Um, did not get that extra time I was looking for today. Once again had a little bit of work to do. It is what it is, we'll push forward man, we'll continue to move forward just like this Giants team is doing but we do have a couple of topics to talk about today Jalen Smith was released uh, late afternoon yesterday or was it like in the evening time from the Dallas Cowboys former Pro Bowl uh, linebacker for them and then the Giants today in their practice walkthrough had a couple of notable names that did not participate because of you know a couple of Knicks not sure if I really want to call them injuries because we'll see how serious it is moving forward but very notable guys that did not get part um in depth today's activities there at the facilities but jalen smith former member of the dallas cowboys second round pick in 2016 i believe somebody that recently or i'm not sure if you want to call it recently anymore but i believe it was in 2019 signed a five-year deal with the cowboys an extension that made him one of the highest paid middle linebackers in the league it was five years 64 million 34 million of that was guaranteed money a very surprised release here by the Dallas Cowboys, kind of out of the middle of nowhere. There wasn't really any notable talks with Jalen Smith being shopped on the trade market. There wasn't any notable squattables or, you know, locker room tensions, maybe a fight between the coach and player, or, you know, even from higher ups, general manager, Jerry Jones or something. There was just nothing leading up to something that would suggest he would have been cut immediately in the way that he was cut. Now, there are a couple of other factors that when you think about them, it helps make this situation make a little bit of sense. But still, for him to just be cut outright in the middle of the season, or not even in the middle of the season, just right before a week five matchup in the middle of the week, it seems, is very, very weird. But those things I mentioned was the Cowboys did draft two new linebackers in this year's draft class. And, and a lot of people, including myself, were thinking to themselves, who's going to lose playing time here or which linebacker is going to be the odd man out because they took Micah Parsons, they took Jabril Cox, and yes, Micah isn't even really used as a middle linebacker um, alone. He's being used a little bit all over the field and he's doing a good job at that, but they still had Jabril Cox. They still signed Keanu Neal from the Falcons who converted to a linebacker position, and then you had Smith and Van Der Esch, and you're thinking to themselves, Smith and Van Der Esch is supposed to be one of the better, one of the best middle linebacking duos in the entire league, but the Cowboys don't seem to believe that. Uh, I've spoken to a couple of Cowboys fans. Um, not all of them agree with the move, but there are those that understand it because they believe that Jalen hasn't been living up to his contract. And this year in particular, coming off of an injury, he hasn't really been showing up and showing out. But a little bit of that has to do with the fact that they haven't played him as well. Once again, going back to those draft picks, he's been 100% losing snaps to his fellow linebackers. And there's a couple reports out there that suggest the injury heavily plays into the Cowboys decision as well as them saving I think around 9.2 million dollars in the 2022 league year by cutting him. But of course the reason I'm bringing him up in the first place is because the Giants are currently a little bit thin at the middle linebacker position and a lot of Giants fans want to know whether or not we should explore signing him. What I will say is this, I'm definitely not against it if it's on some type of vet minimum slash prove it deal. I'm not about to go out here and pay him $9 million, which is what he was due this year at around 9.8. And I'm not going to pay him around $5 million either. Um, we, we literally don't even have the space for it. And I know multiple times over this offseason, multiple times over the years, uh, teams, including the Giants, have proven that the cap space can sometimes be a complete myth. But we did just restructure a whole bunch of players' contracts in order to bring in Isaiah Wilson and a couple of other dudes that we signed to the practice squad in the first place. So it is showing that there's only so much you could truly stretch the mythical cap space. And I'm, I do wonder how much more we'd have to stretch it in order to bring Jalen Smith on. Of course, we could cut some players here and there, make a few moves to make space for him. But that's the first thing. Um, I really would like to sign him on a vet deal if the Giants are interested. Um, Patrick Graham will obviously have to go in and see if he's a good scheme fit. See if he fits with what the Giants are doing. Because if I recall, Jalen was playing um, outside linebacker in the Cowboys 4-3. I think he probably was a middle linebacker his rookie year. But if he comes in... We'll see how he does because our guys, I'm going to be honest with you, 
I am happy with the production we're getting out of Tay Crowder and Reggie Ragland. It's not like they've been terrible. Um, Reggie, if I recall during week three, was the Mike linebacker for us. He's the one that had the green dot on the helmet. I'm not sure if it was him week four. I heard, I heard a couple people in chat telling me that it was Tay Crowder week four, whatever the case is. They both, they haven't been doing bad at all. Just this past week, Tay played 100% of the defensive snaps and he gave us nine total tackles, four of them were solo. He's already up to 27 tackles on the year, very much closing in on his rookie year where he had, you know, just a couple games with the Giants because of injury and whatnot, where he only had 57. And then you go over to Reggie Ragland, and Reggie's doing a pretty good job as well. Reggie is a solid tackler for us. Of course, nowhere near Blake Martinez, but he's a backup in the first place, you know what I'm saying? Um, in this past game with us, where he played 78% of the snaps, Reggie racked up eight total tackles with four solo, four assisted for the Giants. And then when we look at both of them, we know the weaknesses of our linebacking core is that we don't really have a true cover guy. Um, that is reflected with um both completion percentages when passed to these guys and passer rating. So for Tay Crowder on the season so far in 2021, he's allowed 78.6% of passes completed. And then the passer rating allowed is very high at 142.3. Reggie Raglin, he's allowed 71.4% of passes completed with a passer rating of 91.4. We go over to Jalen Smith and we look at what he's done so far in the season. Remember what I've said, defensive snaps wise, he's been losing it to you know his fellow linebackers to only 25% of snaps played week one, followed by 76, then 86, then 40 in this last game against Carolina where he only had one tackle total in the entire game. His best game this year came when he played 76% of snaps with nine tackles. And then if we go to his rate passer rating allowed this year, along with uh, completion percentage, it's not that good. The completion percentage is at 90 with a pass rating of 92.9. But keep in mind, this could be affected by a very skewed, um, you know, little sample data right here that we have where he's not playing that much. And if we look historically, He's allowed basically around 105 passer rating with a round like I'd say 75% completion percentage as well. While giving you a good amount of tackles and a nice low missed tackle percentage. Of course, these stats only tell parts of the game. We see it all the time with our own players. So take with this what you will. I obviously don't watch Cowboys game nearly as much as I watch the Giants. So at the end of the day, you'd probably have to go and take a look at Jalen uh, Smith's film by yourself and see how you feel about it and get some thoughts from any Cowboys fans that you know. Once again, like I said, if we take a flyer on him and it's a like on that VIP minimum deal, I have no problems with it. If it's something a little bit more expensive, which I'm not sure if we could afford, that's when I start to have like a legit opinion on it, so to speak. Um, and speaking of injuries, I mentioned Jalen Smith, of course. Uh, the Giants practice walkthrough I mentioned earlier, here are the names that were on there that did not practice per Dan Salmon on Twitter. Jabril Peppers with a hamstring injury, which we learned at the um, press conference after the game that he injured or got injured, I should say, late in the game against the Saints. Sterling Shepard still dealing with a hamstring injury along with Darius Slayton. Caden Smith out with a knee injury. And then the two surprising names and two most important names on here, in my opinion, Andrew Thomas did not participate with a foot injury, and Leonard Williams did not participate with a knee injury. Limited were Saquon Barkley with the knee, Ben Bredesen with the hand, Nate Ebner with the quad, Kenny Galladay with the ground, uh, groin. I don't know why I was about to say ground. But the four biggest names on here, Thomas, Williams, Barkley, Galladay. Now with Andrew Thomas, what I really hope it is not is a re-aggravation of his injury that he had last year, which was a foot injury. You know, he had surgery fixed himself up, came out, and he's been looking like one of the best tackles in the entire league so far. I hope it's not that. Maybe, you know, he's just feeling a little pain and it will pass. Just hoping for the best case scenario here. Same thing with Leonard Williams, one of our best, if not the best players on our defensive side of football. Despite his numbers not being there in the pass rush in terms of pressure and sacks, he's still doing a pretty good job with run stuffing and tackling, and maybe he just needs to get warmed up a little bit more. Of course, Saquon looked like he was just getting to himself. He was limited. Um, and same thing with Kenny Galladay, they both were limited, they both looked like they were getting healthy. All we could do is hope that it's nothing serious, because these four guys are probably the most important guys on this team right now when it comes to our success, and I'm not even exaggerating. Of course, Daniel Jones is up there, but you're talking about your two best players on the line, and then your two best weapons. We need them at full strength. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you think. 
Put your thoughts and comments down below. If anybody has an update on any of this injury stuff, anything to add to the Jalen Smith situation, please do put it down there. That's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.